June 24th, Solemnity of the Nativity of St. John the Baptist, Mass during the day. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O coastlands. Listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth. From my mother's womb he gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me, Israel, through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain and for nothing uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord. My recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Paul said, God raised up David as king. Of him God testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. My brothers, sons of the family of Abraham, and those others among you who are God-fearing, 
To us this word of salvation has been sent. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs, asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name. And all were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened, his tongue freed, and he spoke blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the desert until the day of his manifestation to Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. June 24th, the Solemnity of the Nativity of St. John the Baptist. The first reading comes from Isaiah 49, 1-6. This is one of the songs of the suffering servant. Now the songs of the suffering servant are four anonymous poems that one finds in the second part of the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapters 40-55. to These poems probably were not written by the author of these chapters, but he incorporated them into his message. And we know that because he added verses before and after the poems, which anchored those poems into his text. They speak about an anonymous figure who would suffer for the sake of the people, would take their sins upon himself, would respond to violence with meekness and humility. And in Old Testament times, Jewish sages would ask, who does this refer to? Some people said the nation of Israel, some the prophet Jeremiah, others the author of the poems. They weren't sure. Jesus took these poems and applied them to himself. In fact, during Holy Week, we use these poems as the first readings on Palm Sunday and throughout the week. Well, today these poems are applied to John the Baptist. He is the one who gave witness and his trust was in God. And even though his mission seems to have failed, he was martyred. Nevertheless, he trusts that God will give him a proper recompense. Nevertheless, he trusts that his mission was not in vain, but rather will create the condition in which God's kingdom can dawn. The second reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, verses 22 to 26. Paul is preaching in the synagogue, and he speaks about how John the Baptist showed up, and John gave a baptism of repentance. Remember the difference between John's baptism and Christian baptism? John's baptism is simply for forgiveness of sin, while Christian baptism is both for forgiveness of sin and for incorporation into the Trinity, to be invited into a new type of life. John himself gave witness that somebody is coming after him whose sandals he was not worthy to untie. Now at a superficial level, this saying means that he's not worthy to walk in his shadow, to touch his least significant of garments. But at a deeper level, there's matrimonial symbolism. That Jesus came to marry the widow. Who's the widow? Israel. She had been married to God in the Old Covenant, and she had treated God as if he were dead. So she's as good as being a widow. Jesus is the next of kin. When the next of kin was called to marry the widow, if he refused, then his sandal was untied. John the Baptist can't untie Jesus' sandal, John the Baptist is not the Messiah, Jesus is. He has the rights over the widow. And so John recognizes his subordinate status in this mystery which is unfolding. The Gospel is from Luke 1, 57 to 66 and 80. We hear that Elizabeth gives birth to her child. And eight days later, they're going to circumcise the child and give the child its name. 
Everybody think that Elizabeth and Zechariah will call the child Zechariah or maybe name him after one of the relatives. But instead, they're going to name him John because that's the name that was revealed by Gabriel the Archangel. Now, the name John has a symbolic meaning. Yohanan means Yahweh is merciful. So John the Baptist carries the content of his mission in his name. They ask Zechariah what he should be named. And in a very odd passage, they write it down. Nowhere else in the gospel does it say that Zechariah was deaf. Remember, he was mute because he had doubted the angel's message that his prayers had been answered. He and Elizabeth had been praying for a child for many, many years. But when the angels said that your prayers are answered, you're going to have a child, he didn't believe that this was possible. He didn't believe the power of his own prayers. So the angel effectively said, enough words, now be quiet for a while. Well, he writes down that his name is John, and after that he's able to speak. And in fact, what he speaks is the great hymn, the Benedictus, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, celebrating the fact that God is faithful to his promises. Everybody realizes that something miraculous, something wonderful has happened, and word spreads throughout the land, and the child grew and became strong in spirit and was in the desert until the day of the manifestation. He was in the desert. We don't know exactly what that means because desert in Aramaic could mean simply outside of the city or it could mean in the desert. If he was actually in the desert, there is a theory that maybe he was in Qumran where the Essenes were, those celibate Jewish monks who were awaiting the day of the Lord. In fact, if you look at John's prophetic proclamation, it matches very well what the Essenes were preaching down by the Dead Sea. So it's very possible that John did spend some time with the Essenes learning part of the message that he would proclaim to prepare for the way of the Lord. And may God bless us.